get ready to enter the vortex. Starring Vandita. Four, three. Hey, welcome to our show today. We're going to start again with um, our segment. It's in the bag, baby, for viewer mail. And I'm going to read to you a letter from Mr. Jeff Connor. It says, if this is not the correct address of the person that hosts the show on Mountain View Cable Access, apologies in advance. Saw your show last night on packing and it was great. I could have used this when I was sent to England earlier in the year. That's life, I guess. This is only the second show I've seen. The first was a lamination show, a classic. Yes, people have been inspired by laminators. Which is good, I guess. Um, I tried writing your Vandita.com address, but you said it had been down. True. I was wondering if you have scheduled shows available and if you're at the same time every week. Yes, dear viewer, <laughs> you're, you're, um, it is on every Wednesday at 7. This coming Wednesday, which, well, you don't know yet, but um, this Wednesday, December 2nd, it's so the first, no, the first. It's not on because I've been preempted by some other programming. What could possibly be more interesting than your show? It's not, but hey, I'm not the program director. What can I do? It could be the death threats they've received if they continue to air your show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, so, um, at the time that I received this email, uh, Mr. Jeff was my first viewer. Woo! Yeah! So I think we might even be in double digits on viewers now. Alright, and, and... it's kind of like the census. There's always those people that just don't get counted, you know? And everybody has really congratulated me on receiving my hate mail that I received, because they said you can't really be famous unless you get some bad mail, too. So, um, everybody's even more excited about that. But just because that's good, um, don't send me more. Please, just nice letters are appreciated. Okay, um, let's see. Shows... Every Wednesday at 7 p.m. on KMVT Channel 6 for those of you who get cable TV from TCI or digital cable from TCI. Unless, of course, you're Herman and Herman returned his digital cable box to TCI the other day. He's like, I'll come back in a year and pick this up when you have your technology ironed out. <laughs> but that's Herman. Okay, um, currently there are five episodes in circulation. The Art of the Fold on folding fitted sheets. The Laminator on laminating stuff. Packology on um, packing travel bags. Trivial pursuits or organizing your purse or handbag. Catch the fever, the Millennium Bug, preparing for Y2K. That aired only once due to some technical difficulties. Um, apparently the tape I taped was in SLP format instead of SP. Um, and I thought it was okay for my sister to view on her non-super VHS player. And so while they got the audio track, they were unable to get the video. However, my sister's husband found the show very amusing, so I think I found a potential new audience in the blind that if they just listen to the show, they'll be just as amused as if they were watching it. Howard so, Stern always was much better on the radio. I'm not as ugly as Howard Stern. You know what I'm saying? Okay. okay. Um, and let's see, last time's show was Ring Around the Toilet, and today's is rub a dub tub so, seven. Woo! Okay, seven. <laughs> Alright. Um, I do shows about every other week when I feel like it, but I have no, no control over which episode they air and when. They do tend to air the newer episodes versus recycling the older ones. Um, okay, I explained the Millennium thing. Episodes get planned by me as soon as I can think of a cool title. That's my limiting factor. Um, but the next couple of shows I'm also planning are Millennium 2, where I forgot to tell you guys the first time. <laughs> and uh, Wet Kitty, Giving Your Pet a Bath. That one's been really exciting. You may want to turn the volume down then. Um, Hang Man, Hang a Picture. Um, 
dryer lint, just matter on um, cleaning your dryer and the dryer lint contained therein. Very important. Um, organizing your car trunk, uh, organizing extension cords and computer cords and so on. Um, let's see, I missed the Thanksgiving thing, but here's the deal. Outsource it to Safeway or your favorite grocery store. Um, this way you can spend more time with your dysfunctional family like I did. So, I had a very interesting Christmas. My mother dressed, or th sorry, Thanksgiving. My mother dressed just like me. And then she wore four outfits throughout the day. And then she was really weird. Well, if you didn't eat Thanksgiving dinner naked, you wouldn't have been wearing the same outfit. She dressed like me. I was already dressed and she wore like a jacket and pants just like I did. And I've now found out that my father shops at the Gap. I'm horrified. Is that like Grandpa Gap or something? It's Gap Senior. <laughs> or Gap for people with gaps in their teeth and memory and so on. Okay. okay. I think we've insulted our families enough. Please continue. My father and mother can never know about the show, people. Never. Never. Although maybe they probably wouldn't get the jokes anyway. Because I told my mother to, you know, either like the SH word or get off the pot, you know. And she's like, um, and this is in context of something completely different. And so she says to me, but I didn't have to go number two. I had to go number one. <laughs> That's like a uh, communication barrier here. All right. Okay, segments of the show, word of the day, it's in the bag, baby, driving tips, uh, I'm going to start some movie ratings very soon, and also I'm starting a new segment called Van Adiums, my take on ads that I've seen on billboards and so on in the Bay Area that either annoy me or I've rewritten them. Okay, uh, let's see, general comments on idiots I deal with every day, um, and funny stories that seem only to happen to me, like falling in front of the chief of fire in Mountain View. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alright, um, and uh, on with the show, and we're gonna rub a dub tub. Hi, welcome back. We're back in the guest bathroom, and we're going to talk about um, cleaning the tub, which is involves a lot of chemicals, which is really cool. Alright, but first, um, we're gonna do our word of the day which is a little late, but pretty close to being timely. The word of the day is Gigapalooza. Similar to Lollapalooza and whatever palooza, Gigapalooza is also known as Comdex, for those of you in the valley industry. And it's where all these nerds get together and have no idea what to do in Las Vegas every year. And so they pretty much run around getting free pens and pencils and bags, and I think they're really cool for doing that. And Apparently you've never been to Comdex. They always have porn stars there. Well, if I wasn't there, then I don't know how you can have a star there, but whatever. <laughs> and it's a, it's a total geek fest. I mean, like, ratios are 20 geeks to one girl. Girls can be geeks too, you know. Yes, and I'm a geekette, but I hide it in public. Mm. Okay. You didn't give the correct pronunciation of the word, though. It's geekapalooza. You know, as in loser. Guess what this is? A loser. It's a three-dimensional loser. Okay, and guess what this is? I don't know. Wow! Cool. Alright, let's clean the tub. Can you turn on the light? I can't see. Um, okay, again, we want to use something like a bathroom cleaner for the tiles because if you use this up here, you're not going to get the tiles nice and shiny. And again, using something like a Windex or 409 Fantastic stuff, uh, it's just not really all that fantastic in the bathroom. Um, but you can use it for short duration, um, whatever. But what you want to do is shake the can. And I thought you said not to shake, but to, well, that was the last episode. Anyway, continue. That's if you piddle. Okay. But what you're going to do is like this, okay? Can I write my name? No. And you don't want to spray too far away, because otherwise the spray things go everywhere. And, and just wipe. Now, 
if the grout, and this is grout, not caulking by the way, which I learned the hard way from my plumber, um, you can get like a little grout brush to do a little cleaning, or um, sometimes I just throw straight bleach onto the problem. And, um, but sometimes that doesn't work and you'll need to re-grout or you'll need to just scrub with a wire brush. Should you maybe give the bleach and ammonia warning now? What Certain warning? things don't mix. Bleach and ammonia are two things you don't want what to do mix together. What do they do? Together. Well, they produce chlorine gas, essentially. Oh, resulting, that's what was bothering me. Resulting in nausea, vomiting, you know, um, death, etc. Oh, excuse me while I throw up. Okay. Um, so you want to do that on all the tiles. I also use the same substance or similar type cleaner on the ceiling because sometimes you'll get these little orange droplets of something or the other up on the ceiling. And so um, my usual weekly cleaning or bi-weekly cleaning is arm height. So however far I can reach with my arm is what I clean. And then I take a little step ladder and clean the ceiling and the, um, the walls around. Now, you may be able to notice that I've got a window here in the bathroom. Also, if you make a big stinky, open the window, but don't forget to close it. But, um, so I use, you know, a glass cleaner on the glass, of course. And, thinking ahead for my guests, this is the guest bathroom, um, I did a few, actually a few years ago, install a shower massager, because what was on here was this ugly green thing. So now it's a nice off-white. Okay, now then, um, down here for the tub itself, you want to use a scrubber that, um, similar to this, is um, covered with a, a plastic because this allows you to, to rub and get the stains out without scratching the surface of the porcelain. Okay, and um, you can use this, the bathroom cleaner works well. There's a lot of good products out there. Um, explore and experiment, they're all very good, and especially they all have the same chemicals in them. Um, I try to get the ones with bleach myself, just to give me that little extra edge. And what you do with this, and we'll just use this one because this is easier. Again, you just spray, and it's a lot harder when the toilet is actually, or when the tub is dirty. And you're just gonna scrub with this, and then, if it's for the guest bathroom, presumably nobody's going to use it anytime soon. So you can use a paper towel to dry it off, because if you don't do that, you'll get um, stains, like, uh, you know, cleaning stains. Like, uh, what do you call those? Uh, you get, like, um... Soap scum? No, you get, like... Well, I forget what you call it. Anyway. Um, to clean the handles, it's a little more complicated, and these handles are pretty old. Sorry, my knees always crack. Um, but what I usually try to do is I take these little things out, and I use a Q-tip inside of here, and then if you Don't use... you mean a cotton swab? Whatever. And then I use one of those four-point screwdrivers, what do you call this? A Phillips head? Yeah! Okay, Phillips head, because there's four little things in here versus the two little things. Anyway, however many little things you have. And then you can take this out and actually rinse this and get back in here. Because there's really just a lot of scum buildup and you'd just be amazed at the kind of stuff that's in your, uh, in your toilet. Or in your, I keep saying that, in your tub, in your tub. You know, Vandita, if you didn't confuse the toilet and the tub so often, you might not have to clean the tub. <gasps> How'd you know? Okay. And then, you want to again clean all the way to the top, and the best way to keep a bathroom clean is sort of to clean it every day anyway. So after I shower, I just rinse this off, rinse these, everything off with this. So it's very good handy to have one of these guys. And um, on this, I haven't really had much success in cleaning these doors. They're not glass, they're some sort of plastic or fiberglass. And um, I use a stainless steel or a fiberglass cleaner to clean the, um, the, um... The framing and the yeah. bar, and the towel bar. The silver colored stuff. Okay, the chrome. Chrome! Yeah, right. So, um, so I use that. And you want to make sure you get everything here. 
and everything on the outside. And don't forget to clean the outside of the tub as well. The other thing I do, so we've cleaned this while we're in the bathroom. Um, what do you mean we? <laughs> Who's we? Because I know I don't clean the in the The royal bathroom. me. Okay. Princess of Vanadium. Okay. Then, what I also like to do is I use the same tools to clean the sink. And um, remember that old saying, if thine right eye offend thee, pluck it out? So, my sink Ow. handle... Oh, sorry. My sink handle was offending me because it was old and gooby, so I had a new one put in. And um, that way I got to you know, laugh at what old man Anderson had done himself in the house. But, same thing works, and you really do want to get a separate cleaner for the chrome. Um, I personally use a stuff called Stainless Steel Magic. It's magic! There's a lot of magical products, but um, anything works. This will work in a pinch, but it's just not quite for the chrome. For the wooden cabinets, I use a wood cleaner. Again, to do a quick job, um, whatever you have handy is fine. Make sure you get into all the little nooks and crannies. I also replaced these um, door um, handles because they were bothering me and annoying me. Okay. And um, let's see, that's all. You want to keep your bathroom cleaning supplies in your guest bathroom. Why? Because that's probably the closest place you're going to have space to put your stuff in. My bathroom is full with my stuff, so the guest bathroom has cleaning supplies in it for the bathrooms. All right, and being the good, ever the good hostess, what I do, you want to come in here, is I keep every supply necessary for a guest. In other words, they should never have an excuse to have bad breath, dirty hair, <laughs> uh, not shaving, or anything else. And George requested Q-tips. Oh, sorry. Cotton... Cotton swabs. Swabs? <laughs> swabs. Swabs. Yeah. Cotton swabs. So I purchased some cotton swabs for George. I also purchased sparkling water, even though I said I only drink non-sparkling water. And I also purchased a whole vat of yogurt for him. And he hasn't come back in two weeks. All right. It's part of the Vandita's, like, how to keep the guest bathroom clean. Simply scare away all the guests. Yeah, I mean, like, you're welcome to spend the night or something, but, like, okay, if you have to, like, do something bad, like, go somewhere else. And if you're going to make a mess, don't try to cover it up, because I will discover it, and I will find it out, and they will seek you out and destroy you. And so, you really need to just be a considerate guest. I mean, I'm trying to be a considerate hostess. I even have, like, a little water carafe, and I have blankets and comforters. I even have a TV in the guest bedroom, which I think is a very thoughtful touch. Don't you? Maybe we should put a sign out front, free HBO. I'm thinking of renting a room. What do you think? Um, I'd love it if you went and rented a room. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so that's the deal. And then I also keep an alarm clock for the guests to use. Hand towels and these towels. And usually what I'll ask is the guest is, how many towels do you need? Because when I went to visit George, there are only, there's only one towel. And I need two towels. One for hair, one for me. One for hair, one for me. Also, there's no towel, there's no rug. So I had to walk in kitty litter that had been littered by the kitties that they had. And then my feet were dirty after I just cleaned them. Uh, if you blow dry your hair, and this is especially for the ladies, um, I use one of these lint picker uppers. You can get these in bulk at the bulk warehouse store. You all know which one I'm talking about. And this is great to just pick up the lint on the carpets here. And it'll pick up, oh, it picked up a George hair. How do we know it's a George hair? Because uh, I saw George hairs in the tub when I cleaned the tub. As long as it's not curly. It's a curly... <laughs> it's a curly George hair. Ew, it's a pube hair. Nasty. But, because you see, I have long hair, and so the hair just... The hair flies everywhere when I dry it. And these are really good. They just clean it right up. And I actually... I put the rugs down to... Um, to keep the floor from getting wet and people from slipping. And let me give you another little tip. If you're going to put a rug in the bathroom or a rug anywhere in your house, make sure it has a sprayed on non-skid backing. I've seen rugs for like 
20, 30, 40, 50 bucks, okay, that don't have a non-skid backing. And it's like, hello people, then you just have to buy some like rug tape, and then how can you clean your stupid rug in the washer if it has rug tape? Because then you have to re-rug tape the rug. You know what I'm saying? So I always get them with a the fully like rubberized backing. And, and then I just throw these in the wash, and what it does is there's a nice dry place for the person to step onto. They're not going to fall and like sue me or something because of whatever damages as people are known to do in this lovely state of ours. Um, and it's just nice and dry and comfortable. And it's beige, which opens up the room a lot. Putting a dark blue would make this place look really medieval. But beige makes it look summery, cheerful, more California. And makes you forget that the whole room is only about two and a half feet by two and a half feet. Yeah, man, these bathrooms are really, really small, and it really kind of is irritating. The master bathroom is a little bigger, and there's actually a storage space where I keep all my rolls of toilet paper. If I only have six rolls left, I'm kind of uncomfortable, and I feel like I'm running low. So again, I, I buy those in bulk, like, excess, because uh, you can never have too much toilet paper. Especially if you're a girl. So, um, anyway, and there's a lovely trash can lined with seven bags. And all waste products can go in there. I can, and also, you want to provide your guests with a dryer, um, a hair dryer. And um, if your house can't handle 1875 watts of dryer heat wattage, then you need to see an electrician. I need to call time though when I'm. Hi, and we're back. Um, welcome to my lounge. Yeah, this is my lounge. Me and my posse, Sammy. Sammy sleeps in the middle of the bed no matter what. She's very, very cute. Except she's species confused and gender confused. But anyway, that's a long story. I could go on and on about the pets I've owned, but then some nasty people would report me to PETA. Okay, um, we're going to um, go back to the driving tips segment, which I haven't touched upon since my first episode. Here's some pieces of information for you. First of all, if you're going to give somebody the finger on the road, like do it. Don't be passive aggressive about it. I had to pass this woman because she was in the left lane on 280 and she was like going like 80 miles an hour, and I was like, I wanted to go 90 or more. And so, okay, so she does it. So here's the steering wheel, right? And she carefully puts her finger like this, you know, so that certain one is like pointed upwards. And I was like, this is very passive aggressive of you. But people here are nothing if not passive aggressive. But if you're going to do it, do it like this go, yeah, or really do it. Really stick it to them, man. That's what we would do in LA. Okay, so do not be passive aggressive. If you're gonna do it, if you're gonna give somebody a finger, do it. And if you're in the left lane and you're going slowly and you see somebody approaching behind you, don't let them tailgate you and get mad at a tailgater. Move your little car over to the next lane. That's the whole point of driving. And I learned that from my New Jersey driver's class. Well, you could stand over here, hello. Duh. Okay, I'm getting very angry already. All right, next thing. Shallow Alto has a new rule. Only compact cars can park in compact only spaces. Okay, I have a big problem with this because I have a full size car. And while it is thin enough to park in a compact space, it is definitely a little on the long side. And those of you with SUVs, much as I don't like a lot of you, um, I still feel you're entitled to park in whatever space you can fit your car into. Now, I come from the other side of the tracks. I used to drive a little Miata thing. And I used to be a little intimidated of the big guys, the big cars, and they couldn't see me, and there's a little old me, you know. And, um, and sometimes I would park in a full-size space, even though I had a compact. So unless the compact drivers are willing to park in compact-only spaces and give the full-size, big-ass car spaces to people like me, this law just it doesn't work. And I urge each and every one of you to challenge this law in the court system. I myself am personally planning during the holiday season to park in compact only spaces. Why? Because this is an unjust law 
and how do you change an unjust law in our judicial system of checks and balances? You break the law and you take them to court. And I've begun. Okay, so basically, the way you overturn a law is you go through the court systems, you go through appeals, and eventually you'll be all the way in the Supreme Court. Also, this whole parking thing, what happened was in the early 80s through the late 80s, cars were getting smaller, the, you know, there's an issue of uh, fuel efficiency and so on and so forth. And these parking lot manufacturers, they don't manufacture parking lots, but anyway, the parking lot industry, parking lot industrial military complex, suddenly decided they could put in more parking spaces if they painted them closer together. Which is like, no, because then cars got bigger and they've only gotten bigger. I don't know if you guys have seen like some of these big old luxury SUVs. Those are big cars, and yeah, they're they're pretty scary, but you got a right to buy whatever car you want, you know? And if you can drive it, if you can handle it, you're more than welcome to any car. And if you can parallel park it, even better. Um, so, the point is, this is an idiotic law, and luckily in Mountain View we don't have such idiotic laws. And if we do, yeah, you bet I'm going in front of city council. If anything, I think they ought to ticket the people with the little tiny cars that take the big space. See, that's, that's the whole point. I mean, but, you know, I've, people have left a little note in my car saying, please park in the space allocated. It's like, but if the, the spaces are yay small, you know, somebody left me a very nasty note at my chiropractor last year about that. And it's like, who are you, the parking police or what? I mean, come on, man, Ch chill out. Isn't that this the chill out state? Chill out. <sighs> okay. That's it for now. I'm the anal retentive housewife. That's my line, and I'm doing it.